Hello and welcome back to another Meet the Designer video where we are giving collectors a unique chance to get a behind the scenes look at the design process of brand new coins. This time around, I'm joined by Mike Langman, the designer of the Wildlife Tempe coins. But before we start, why don't you introduce yourself, Mike? My name's Mike Langman. I'm a illustrator and that must be a bird with other wildlife as well, but also a very keen enthusiastic bird watcher and uh, leader of events activities but my main profession is illustration illustrating books magazines and anything else that comes along my way now as you can imagine i have so many questions to ask you mike but i think we should start with the design process so talk me through that process be it from the moment you receive the brief to when you see the design on the final coin so reading through the brief i realized that um most illustrations would have to fit a very specific area so um, when I started looking at the brief and, and producing a few visuals, I had to make sure that those visuals would fit the spaces as well as they possibly could. Some of them actually, once I produced even the visuals, didn't fit, so I had to redo those. But it, it's a nice process to go through to, to learn how to do that and work out how they're going to be put together. Of course, now did you have to work on a much smaller scale considering that the final designs had to fit on a 10p coin? I can imagine that must have been quite a hard challenge for you. I had to work at a slightly smaller size. So when I'm painting for a book or for an interpretive board or something, we usually the paintings are quite large and I reduce them down to size. But the coins had just meant illustrating the images a little bit smaller. But the, the process otherwise would have been the same. I, I, would have, um, I would have stretched the paper, so it's hot press watercolour paper, which is very fine, very, very flat, no dimples in it. So I stretch that on a board to start with, leave it to dry for probably a couple of hours. And once it's dried, I can then sketch the image out onto a piece of paper and then start painting. Once the painting is finished, uh, and on this occasion it was produced at double the size. And in fact, more than that, it was two and a half times the size of the coin final production. Uh, and it's then obviously reduced down and fitted into the space on the coin itself. Well, personally, I think you've done a great job. So when it comes to drawing and sketching um, animals, is it something you do from photos or is it out and about when you see them there and then? I certainly work with photographs. I use detailed photographs to put the images together, but I also work on my own knowledge of the wildlife. And um, although I'm, I'm very much a bird watcher through and through, my, my interest in wildlife has gone hand in hand with bird watching for all of my life. Anybody who goes out bird watching will see wildlife and be interested in it and I regularly watch and sketch and draw wildlife as well. So it's a mixture of putting together an image which will fit the space, capture importantly the character of the animal that we're illustrating and putting on the back of that coin and making sure obviously it fits the area as well. So for the initial um, illustrations, um, for example, the badger was a species I, I used to get in my old garden. I, in fact, I used to feed them. So I had parties of sometimes 11 badgers coming into the back garden they caused devastation, they ripped apart my gardens on a couple of occasions, so in the end I fenced them off out of the very top ends and I would put food out. So I had my studio in the back garden which had spotlights on the back which looked out onto the badger. In fact, I had people coming on watching them. So I had lots and lots of drawings and sketches of the badgers and that was probably my favourite corn actually, it's the one I enjoyed doing most. So it was a badger set up to looking at me which fits the space perfectly, just the way I used to watch them. But you don't only draw the animals, do you? You also annotate around the edge. Absolutely. I mean, when I, when I produce a sketch out in the wild and sketching from life, I'm trying to capture the, the character, but also perhaps a little bit of different behaviour from the creature as well. So a different pose, a pose I've not seen before, or, or the animal doing something different as well. And the badgers particularly were fascinating. I used to watch them gathering up the grass. So anything they've done that before, they used to scuttle back and pull the grass back towards there back towards a set at some point after eating the food. So it's little drawings like that which you wouldn't normally see, I think, in, in magazines or books, which just helped me to really get to know the species very, very well to the inside out back to front and, and make sure that you can create something which really does capture that animal perfectly. And of course, talking about sketches, do you have a favourite medium to work with? Because I guess when you're out and about, you must be quite limited with what you can use. When I'm sketching in the fields, it's very much just a notebook, a pencil, and then when I get back home, I add some colours immediately. So if, if you looked at some of my sketches, you'd see some notes around it with colours to be added later on just to remind me if I've got more that's happened. 
haven't remembered yet at the time, so I probably did loads. And I would add the colour and meter and get back there again. So then the sketches come to life with the colour on it as well. But in the field, it's mostly just a pencil sketchbook, and that's it. Now, of course, just from talking to you right now, it's clear to see that you have a lot of experience with British wildlife. Do you think this experience has helped you with this current project? Absolutely, Adam. Yeah, I've, um, I've been a bird watcher since the age of 11. Uh, I joined the school group at the time and, and eventually joined a local group and then became a leader of the local group. So I was taking people out watching birds and I, I've, I've been fascinated and I've a real passion for birds for all my life. I've been bird watching now for nearly 50 years. So I've, I've kept it going and, and certainly certainly helps when you're sketching and drawing and knowing a species very well as well. If you've been watching something for 40 years or more, you're going to know it very, very well. And it, I can pretty much draw any species of birds off the top of my head without looking at any books or any images at all. So I can just do that because I've got the knowledge. And because I spend all my life drawing and sketching, I suppose that makes a difference. Yeah, I can only imagine. Now, my favourite from the six new coins has to be the fallow deer. Um, have you got a favourite? I mean, I think I already know that you are going to mention the badgers. Yeah, absolutely. The badger is certainly my favourite one. It's, it's an animal I've really appreciated. I know over the years when I lived in my previous house, the number of people which came along and to see their enjoyment of watching an animal like that at close range, I mean, right up to the back doors, they can ask you here, but it's just fantastic. I mean, they really are. Although birds are my favourites, I have to say that any wildlife I see is, is, is interesting as well. Great choice. Well, thanks for joining me today, Mike. And for anyone watching right now that would love to add these brand new coins to their collection, you can do just that by heading over to the link on screen now. All I have to say is thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.